everyone. Fight. 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 Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kai and I'm officially a first year medical student at UST Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. If you're a returning subscriber, you know that I was a med tech student previously and obviously from my very last graduation vlog, I won't be making any more content about that. But now I'm going straight into med school content. So hopefully if you want to see more content like that, like and subscribe and comment down below maybe what med school you're from or what med school you want to apply to down in this video. So if you're here, you're probably in the process of your med school application, maybe thinking about where you want to apply to med school and wondering how the overall process looks like in the Philippines and kind of lost. Maybe you're not lost and you're super knowledgeable and you want this video to jog your memory and how the overall process works it's completely fine. I want to preface this video by saying that this is my experience when it comes to the med school application process and also a little disclaimer, I only apply to two schools and you probably see that in the title. I only applied to ASMPH and USDFMS so I've tagged down some videos below that I've watched about the other med schools and how to apply to them and it might be able to help you. But this video is going to also cover obviously the overall process and overall requirements as requested by my followers in IG. If you haven't followed me on IG, I do polls there to see what most of the viewers want to see on my YouTube channel. So go give that a follow and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want more content like this. I am going to go ahead and basically talk about the med school application process and this video is going to be quite lengthy because I want to go into detail and also help others build their portfolio for med school applications but we're going to go through this structure of the video feel free to skip ahead or return to the video or parts of the video that you want based on your understanding of the process so let's dive into it so let's do a little bit more of an introduction of who I am before I start talking about the overall process because I feel like it will give more context to the rest of the video as to why I applied to ASMPH and USD FMS. So I'm a USD undergrad, obviously my expected track quote unquote is for me to apply to USD FMS because obviously USD Med is the normal track for USD undergrads to go to but some people deviate from that and that's completely fine which is the reason why I applied to ASMPH and I found that I really liked ASMPH's values and the way that they teach their students their student to teacher ratio is amazing and the way that they handle their students and I've seen that throughout the application process is the reason or one of the biggest reasons as to why I applied to ASMPH it's also their MD MBA program so if you want to know a little bit more about that they're just not giving you an MD degree they're also giving you a joint MBA degree which I think is a really good differentiating factor especially if you're planning to practice here in the Philippines but without further ado let's now go into the overall process I just wanted to give a little bit more context and why I applied to those two schools so the overall process basically begins with you taking the NMAT or completing your undergraduate course. It can be interchangeable considering that you're probably already in your undergraduate course and that could be a non-traditional path or a traditional path. A traditional path just basically means that you are in a health allied course or a science course. And as far as I know, as I saw in ASMPH, they do accept non-traditional graduates without the need for additional units and some med schools do ask for additional units for non-traditional undergraduates and non-traditional just basically means those who are outside the health allied health allied profession or the sciences profession and those who aren't currently taking up subjects like biology or chemistry or they don't have that in their degree however that's completely fine and most med schools really do accept non-traditional graduates but if you are a non-traditional grad in that sense that i'm talking about and that sort of definition then you can go ahead and check out the video below that i watched this person was actually a non-traditional graduate and proceeded into med school and this was their experience and i think it's going to be really insightful for those who are non-traditional grads anyway after your undergraduate or while you're completing your undergraduate you could 
take the NMAD. And this is completely dependent on you as an individual, whether you're taking a gap year or you're not taking a gap year. But NMAD scores are valid for two years. So technically speaking, you can take it in your third year and it would be valid by the time you apply to med school in fourth year. Or you can take it in fourth year and take a gap year and you'd still have a valid NMAD score to apply to schools with. However, that's just a really important thing to remember, especially if you're wanting to take a gap year, maybe you want to take your NMAT in your fourth year and not have to think about it during your gap year. But that's completely under your discretion. However, the NMAT score is one of the most important requirements in med school, and I'm gonna talk about it later with the overall requirements. If you're not familiar with the NMAT, it's National Medical Admissions Test. It's like the leveling ground for most med schools, but honestly, there's a little bit of controversy there because it doesn't really determine how good of a doctor you'll be, but you still need it, unfortunately. Now let's talk about the overall requirements with the med school. So basically, after you've done your NMAT, you're pretty much complete as long as you have the grades for your undergraduate and then your NMAT score and you can apply to any med school documents. So number one is the transcript of records or the infamous TOR. Most med schools actually ask for your 3.5 years. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it's basically saying that they want your TOR or transcript of records to reflect the first semester of your fourth year. And some med schools actually ask for three years, some ask for 3.5 years, and most of the time it's 3.5 years. But TOR is asked for all med schools. If you are a USC grad and you are applying to USC FMS, they don't ask you for your TOR, they'll ask you for your student number so that they can access your grades in the portal. And in who? Next is identification documents, and this includes your ID pictures, normally it's 2x2, two two, but some people ask for 1x1, one one, and also your birth certificate and the necessary forms that they're going to ask, whether it's online or on paper. And then they'll ask for your official NMAT score. But med schools always ask for a hard copy of your NMAT. And then for other schools, they'll require your personal recommendation letters and your character references. Almost all schools ask for character references because they need to know and not validate you as a person, but most of the time they want to know how you are in a particular environment so obviously they want to know who you are in a student environment they also want to know how you are in the community so they may ask for a character reference in your community now let's go into the two schools that i applied to which is asmph and usd fms so number one we have asmph this is how their application went so obviously during this time of the pandemic there is an online application and i'm not entirely sure if they have an online application this year or they want to do in-person interviews because of the new alert level system and everything kind of lifting up anyway so i'm not entirely sure how it's going to go because my entire process was completely online and one of the things that i appreciated so much about asmph's administration is their response and how quick they respond to their students especially those who are applying they genuinely care for their applicants and so that's just a really big plus if you want to apply to asmph so first and foremost you're going to basically create an online account through your online application as far as i remember our, our application was due around february oh, and you can see that and access it through their website down below of course don't create an online account yet i'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to anyway because obviously the application process hasn't started but there are a few additional requirements on top of what i've said before that adeneo does ask for which is number one is the personal statement that they say is optional however i encourage or highly encourage everyone basically means i'm asking you to submit a personal statement and this year they didn't really give us a prompt and regardless if there was one i have signed an nda saying that i can't talk about it however there was no prompt and you just basically write a personal statement about your experiences and your strengths and weaknesses so even if it says optional make sure that you do write a personal statement and upload it to your application they will also not mention the PR or NMAT requirement that 
most schools do talk about but if you look in their frequently asked questions tab they do require that students or they prefer that students have an NMAT PR of 90 and above and I'm not sure if that changed this year it might have changed because I know some people who did get in with lower than 90 but I'm pretty sure that's their preference let's go on to recommendation letters just a little tip you have to make a template especially for professors who you are approaching to write your recommendation letter so that the process is a little bit more streamlined and it's just gonna give them more ground to write about instead of them just writing the entire thing by themselves but some professors would rather that they write it by themselves and you should ask them that before you offer the template okay so now let's go on to the second phase of the ASMPH application which is that once you submit your online application you have to wait if you'll be accepted for the interview any interview is kind of nerve-wracking because waiting for an interview slot actually takes a long time at least for me it took a month before I got my interview slot and I was on the latter half of the applicants like on the very end group of applicants who were getting interviewed and regarding the interview I am of course not allowed to disclose how the interview went or interview questions so for those who want to comment and ask me about the interview questions I can't say them to you guys obviously but the interview is going to look into who you are as a person and it's not really in the medical light it's not about your achievements it's not about who you were in undergrad it's more about you as a person and the only thing that i can really tell you guys that's going to be super helpful is to draw on your experiences in the past regarding your leadership regarding your volunteerism because it's important that you talk about them it makes you human what makes you human basically is what the interview is going to bring out of you and as i said number one draw on your experiences and number two is be honest with your answers but of course still be respectful of asmph's values and what they believe in but be true to yourself be honest with your answers but also draw on your past experiences and still have a healthy boundary between the interviewer and you as well as asmph as an institution in any institution honestly with any interview and now if you're interested in doing the scholarship route with asmph before you go into your online application i suggest that you look into the buttons and all of the things that you're going to agree to click because i know that the online application will ask if you will be applying for a scholarship so make sure to check that button out if you're going to be applying for a scholarship all right so let's move on to usd faculty of medicine and surgery their application is actually quite easy there's no interview process and during the pandemic you basically just upload your documents and pray that you will get in that's basically what happened with us so the online application looks like this and it's their website their overall website is this yellow colored website basically and once the application opens there's going to be a username and the number and your password in there now usd has over the many years opened their application consistently on November and so if you're planning to take the end in October and you got the score that you were satisfied with you can easily just apply to USC FMS by November rather and it stretches until March actually for us it extended a little and in deep into March I think maybe like March 15 or March 17 and then it closes so you have a lot of leeway you have a lot of time um, with USC FMS however of course there's really nothing much to spice up your application it's basically just uploading all of your documents so for USD graduates the only difference is that you don't have to submit a TOR as far as I'm as far as I know that seems to be the only difference when I talked with those who were non USD grads the only thing that you need is your student number to upload however if you're a non USD grad unfortunately you do have to upload a TOR but make sure to read those requirements because they may vary year from year to year they may ask for three years or they may ask for 3.5 years so just make sure that you look at that requirement 
And obviously one of the strong parts of your application is your NMAP PR. Unfortunately, that is the hard truth. And one of the things that I noticed is that they're really strict on the 85 above NMAP PR requirement. And that's just something that I noticed. So if you're go wanting to go to UCFMS, I'd say aim for 90 above so that you know that your application is pretty much sureball into acceptance. And so the other thing that they do ask for is character references. And one of the things that I remember from a tip from a senior is that make sure, please make sure that you alert your character references that you are putting them in an application for med school. Because some people will just put their character reference without asking them and they're asking for very sensitive information about your character references. Like number one, their name is already a sensitive information, but also their address and their standing in the university or community that you're in. So make sure that you alert your character references, especially for USC online applications or USC applications. As far as I know, for the online applications, they do ask once you're an eligible applicant to submit your physical documents. So that comes after when you get accepted. Now let's go on to the overall tips that I have for those who are applying to med schools this year and for the years to come, hopefully I can cover that. Number one is to request for documents early. For me, I was such a big complainer during the time of my med school applications because I would never get my papers on time. But always remember that you are not the only person applying to a med school in your current college or school, which is the reason why you need to make sure that you give the administration leeway for your paper since most of them do put a disclaimer that it will take maybe three working weeks for your documents to come. So request for documents early. It will make you an early bird and lessen the stress of submitting these documents by the time that you apply for med school. And then number two is be practical in application fees. For me personally, it's the reason why I only applied to two schools. Even if I would love, and I'm pretty sure my parents would have allowed me to apply to like 10 schools, all I wanted was to apply to two schools and I wanted to just try my luck with these two. And the reason is because the application fees are kind of expensive and it's becoming practical or being practical rather than trying to waste a lot of money on applying to a lot of schools and most of my classmates actually ended up only applying to a maximum of four schools um, not only for that reason alone obviously but also because it's about preference and narrowing down instead of trying to apply to so many there is a lot of stress in med school applications so if you want narrow it, up, narrow it down to five or even maybe four and then if you decide to be someone like me I just applied to two so make sure that you remember that application fees will range from 1,500 pesos to 3,000 pesos depending on the institution. As for USDFMS and ASMPH, it was 3k. Alright, so an overall tip or overall tips now not on the application itself but on you as a medical school applicant, which is number one is to build on who you are and who you are as a person outside of school as well because med school Med schools want to know who you are outside of you being a student. It's not about you just being a student for the rest of your life, rather, right? Of course, you're going to be a student for the rest of your life, philosophically speaking, especially in the profession that we're pursuing. However, it's also important to know that you are a person outside of school. So what are your hobbies, your interests, what volunteer work have you done, and what community are you part in? And it's better to build on that because they'll see a versatility of an applicant and it will definitely separate you from other applicants as well. And lastly, in all of your interviews and, and all of the applications that you'll do, be real and be yourself. And as cliche as that sounds, it's so important because who you are will always show, especially in interviews. But if you are a good and kind-hearted person and you really want to pursue this with all of your passion with all of your heart it's definitely going to show and med schools will absolutely love you as their applicant and so i hope this video was super helpful once again i know it's very lengthy but if you want to go back to all of the previous chapters and review through them go ahead and do so and recommend this video to your peers if they're also applying to med school 
And with that, I wish you guys luck on your med school applications. And if you want to come back to this video and comment where you got accepted, that's also completely fine. And I'll see you guys in my next video.